Hey guys, this is Seethercord here, and welcome to a new video for you guys today. For today's video, we're going to be talking about another species within the furry fandom. Today's species is one that I am more than sure everyone watching this video has seen at least once, but didn't know that it had a name. And some didn't even think it was an original species from within our fandom. We will be discussing synths. We were very interested about them right after we got to the first comment asking to cover the topic, because neither Crunchy nor I had ever heard this name. But we soon found out that we had seen these cute androids roaming the fandom before. The simps are a very interesting creature that also carries a deep lore which is still being worked on by its creator, Vader-san on Fur Affinity. Vader started working on the synths a while ago, but it was officially posted online around early 2019 along with a website and a wiki dedicated to it and its lore. As for the creatures, I'll be quoting their original post here. Synths are 100% synthetic androids, each equipped with a mind of their own. They are individual minds within robotic bodies, each with their own personality, quirks, weaknesses, and strengths. Typically synths are humanoid, sharing a vaguely reptilian aesthetic. They are highly modular, being able to exchange parts of themselves for different ones. Most of their body, including their shape, color, height, and number of limbs, is customizable. While they state that they are heavily moddable, sims from Vader's universe appear to have grown to like a specific body type. I would say they adapted to having a head shape that resembles one of a dragon, a humanoid torso, and reptilian tails and feet. They don't have any kind of organ or blood. They are completely computer-based androids, but at the same time, were designed with such advanced technology to where their CPU can process emotions, desires, memories, and also learn things in the same way an organic creature would. Since synths have highly customizable bodies, there is no rule as to what every individual synth body is or isn't allowed to have. This also means they can buy or acquire new parts that they can keep at home almost like a wardrobe of plugins. Imagine being able to just unplug your legs and connect some nice wheels instead. In terms of gender, they don't tend to be assigned to one at birth, but can explore any gender they are interested in. Remember that they live in a fantasy world and that there are more than just the male, female, neither, or both that we are used to. The wiki explains that synths often go through multiple gender changes before they find one that they are comfortable with. This is all thanks to the fact that the majority of their body parts are fully moddable. As for their origin, synths were created by a starving population that needed help with their survival. The creatures that produced synths were in dire need of food, but also needed to find a way to work without losing numbers. And that's when the android option was brought up. They developed them and made them in such a way that they would only need electricity to live. And that was a huge positive change in the society. These android lizards were able to work for hours without feeling the hunger their organic friends had to struggle with, and so on this was a great solution to save the society from disappearing. Eventually, civilization was rebuilt and instead of keeping them as companions or work slaves, synths were given a space in society as their own beings. They were given the same freedom as everyone else and it didn't take long for them to adapt to the way organic creatures live. They blended in quite fast. They even have kids nowadays. But no, the synths are unable to have sex. If they want a kid, they have to order them from manufacturers and their babies are basically mailed to them. This reminds me strongly of that scene in the beginning of the Robots movie. I wonder if they have to wait 9 months or can they just go overnight delivery? That was a horrible joke, I'm sorry, that was a bad pun, I'm sorry. <laughs> bad pun. Bad, bad pun. <laughs> As for the baby synths, they grow based on what they eat. There is special food that any synth can consume in order to add new features to both their programming and their physical appearance. I'd assume this is how they go from baby to adult in terms of growth. But these programming upgrades are mostly internal and related to how their body works. If they want to learn about their surroundings, they have to learn everything just like any other creature would by observing, trying, studying, and so on. They are even sent to school. Now talking about their survival, while they don't require to eat regular food to stay alive, they do need to consume coal-based food because carbon is necessary to keep their body healthy. On the other hand, they have battery tissue on their skin which can be recharged in many different ways. This is how they keep themselves alive. 
they need to recharge when they feel tired. Their brain works just like a biological one, and it gets tired of too much work, so they need to sleep. If they're not that sleepy, they often need just a small recharge. But don't worry, most of the plants they live in are advanced enough to where most furniture pieces contain idle charging features, and charging stations can be found pretty much anywhere, for free. Their society is not centered in only one planet. They live in what is known as the Outer Rim, a collection of planets that live together peacefully and have the objective of creating a perfect society alongside exploring the universe. For science. Work-wise, synths are extremely important for the workforce, because they were built with that idea in mind and these creatures are known for their innate urge to help everyone around them. They are very happy to help out with anything and they sometimes have the advantage of being modular, which allows them to fulfill dangerous tasks safely. The question may arise about robots. Are synths machines? If you ask one, they will answer with a no. The explanation is that the technology used to develop them is way more advanced compared to the one used for home appliances, computers, and phones. They see other tech as less intelligent than them but can develop effective feelings towards the little companion bots known as helper bots, which are often treated as pets by them. Helper bots, also called Owobots, are small autonomous service robots designed to fulfill a variety of tasks. They can be owned by both organics and synths and are typically part of households to help with chores such as groceries, cleaning, plant and pet care, etc. The most popular helper bots take the shape of a sphere, with the top of the sphere consisting of a 3D screen, of a similar nature to those screens seen in the visors of synths. Helper bots don't seem to feel emotions, but are programmed in a way to where they have predetermined answers to the commands given to them. The lore is very extensive. It's even divided in arches. But if we were to talk about it here, the video would get too long. So I encourage you to give it a read when you can because the synth story is extremely interesting. We are only summarizing it all in a short video. There is so much we skipped, because we've centered our attention to synths exclusively for this video. To make this video, we based our research mostly on the wiki. The artwork was from Vader Sans for Affinity, and the fursuit work is from Raptor's Den. All of their links will be available in the video description down below. Also, if you are interested in creating your own synth, Vadersan has posted a few fully free to use bases for anyone to create their very own one. The link to the base is also available in the description of the video. If you decide to try it out and make one, do tag me. Who knows? Maybe we'll make a video reviewing your creations. Anyways guys, thank you all so much for watching this episode of our new installment in our series of the furry fandom species known as synths. How do you guys feel about the synths? Do you guys enjoy the species? Do you guys not? Would you guys like having your personas be put into the synth universe or have a synth-like persona? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Special thanks to Cramchi for all the help with the work in today's video. All their social media will be linked down in the description down below. If you guys enjoy our content and want to further help out our channel, please consider donating to us on Patreon as well as our coffee. Remember to smash the like button, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe all together. I've been Seath Record and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye everyone. Everyone. What are we gonna get? Lucky day and average item. Oh, two items. Okay, cool. And I got a boo repellent and a gold mushroom. I'll take that. I'll take I'll I will in fact take that. The boo repellent is good because I don't have to worry about using it if I can get protected. I would have liked to use that literally like 30 seconds ago and avoid losing coins. But it's fine. It, it's fine.